guys, welcome back to our Liberty House. My name's Beth and today is our October garden tour. These are episodes where I simply walk you through our garden and show you what we have growing and talk about all the problems and successes I'm having this month in the garden. So let's get going. First things first, let me reintroduce Liberty, who's our little uh, black lab and namesake. She is our black lab. She's eight years old now, so considered a senior dog, aren't you? Um, but yeah, she's usually behind the scenes here, but she's hanging out with me today in the garden, so I thought I'd reintroduce her for you guys. So if you're new here, welcome. If you're one of our subscribers, welcome back. So happy to have you guys. Um, like I said earlier, so much has changed as we transition seasons here in our backyard. Um, we like to intermix flowers with vegetables just to help pollinators and create kind of an ecosystem. So I'll kind of show you what we have growing here. Um, I like to kind of start on this end of our bed um, and work my way that way. And then I'll show you kind of one bed on the other side of our yard as well. So this bed here is relatively bare. We haven't really planted anything for fall yet in it, um, but I do have jalapenos still growing in here and they are looking so good. Um, we've had so many jalapenos out of this. I really wasn't sure how it was gonna fare, but it's gotten extremely tall because of this rudbeckia that's in front of it, just kept growing. So we've just staked it up to help um, support it but we've been picking jalapenos. Um, and I don't know about you guys, the, you folks in the Sacramento region, our hot peppers this year are not very hot at all. I don't know if that's happening anywhere else around here, but um, we've made a few batches of hot sauce. We have scotch bonnets over in this bed right here. Um, these ones will turn red when they're ready to go. Um, but Lucas blended them up into a hot sauce and they were not hot. It was actually like a really sweet flavor. It was odd. Um, so we threw jalapenos in there to make them a little bit spicier. But even our jalapenos are not that hot this year, which is kind of interesting. I don't know um, much about peppers, I guess, what makes them hot versus not hot season to season. It's always just a guess for us. But curious if anyone else in the region is experiencing that. So this bed, um, like I said, is relatively bare. We haven't planted anything. It, for us, we are planning to amend this bed here soon. We're gonna dig up this rudbeckia and I think transplant it to our front yard flower garden and then plant this whole bed for either onions or garlic. I'm not sure exactly which will go in this bed just yet. But around the backside with this trellis, uh, we have sown some peas which uh, we direct sowed these guys in the ground a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago now. Um, and they are up, at least some of them. Some of them did not germinate. Um, I think especially this side gets a little bit more shade, so they were able to withstand some of those hot weeks that we had recently, because all a bunch of the ones over on this side um, died off probably shortly after they germinated. So I re-sown some in here and I'm just hand watering these in until they get a little bit bigger. So we'll see, hopefully this whole trellis here will be covered it with peas in a few, few months. Coming back over to this bed. So here we have broccoli. We planted six starts of broccoli um, and we are in full swing with cabbage worms. Oh, there's one right there. Let me go grab my glove and pick that guy off. We found the, we've tried a few different things. You can kind of see some like white powder on here. That's some diatomaceous earth that we sprinkled on to um, try to mitigate some of these cabbage worms. And it helped a little bit, but honestly, the cabbage worms just keep coming back. You can see another one right there. Um, year after year, I always talk about, oh, next year I'm going to put on some netting to prevent them, because it's basically these cabbage worms come from those cabbage moths that lay eggs on a lot of brassicas, because it's um, good food for them. However, um, if you don't net them, you will often see these cabbage worms, and signs that you have cabbage worms are when your brassicas look like this with a lot of holes in them, um, which will just 
hurt the plant over time. Um, so it's good to, I think honestly the, the best thing is to just come out here twice a day and try to pick them off as you see them, especially these big guys, because they will eat a lot in a short amount of time. So I just like to pick them off. I usually like to wear gloves because they are a little creepy crawly. Let's see if I can do this one handed. And then I'll just kill them and squish, squish them that way. Um, so I'll try to do that. If they're on the backs of the leaves, sometimes I'll just kind of squish them in place um, like that. But good to just check these guys. Um, but other than the cabbage worms, all of our brassicas have been doing really, really well. Um, they've gotten quite large since we planted a few weeks ago. Um, and yeah, they're just looking really good outside of the cabbage worms. <laughs> Um, showed you guys some of our peppers. We have the scotch ponnet. Um, this here is, um, what is this? A serrano pepper right here. And then we have Thai chilies right over here. And um, you can see some of these over here are turning red. And then we'll just dry those up. And then down below we um, planted just some whoop, some lettuces. This is uh, butter crunch. This one's looking really good. We're gonna start. We're gonna harvest some of this today. This one's actually almost like bolting, probably just because of the hot weather. So I'm not sure how good that one's going to be, but I'm gonna probably harvest this one today before it gets um, too leggy. Over here, I just planted some flowers. So I started some flowers from seed um, and planted the starts out here. So we have clary sage. I have some stock back here. I think this is some calendula that reseeded itself. Um, bachelor button right here and then I just direct sowed some milkweed right back here um, it looks like maybe some other stuff direct sowed um, or self seeded itself because these were flowers last season as well and then you can tell our arch housed all of our tomatoes during the summer we still have a few on here um, we're just kind of letting them ripen out the last of them. But honestly, it's been such weird weather. Um, the tomatoes coming off of this, even though they're ripe, are not that sweet compared to what we were blessed with all summer long. So I think we'll probably tear these out sooner than later. But what has been nice about it is it's offered shade to some of our new transplant starts, uh, which has been really nice for them. So I haven't used quite as much shade cloth as I sometimes do. Some zinnias, uh, our basil is still doing really, really well, still harvesting quite a bit of basil. And then on this side, we've planted peas here for fall. So you can see a lot of these have started to come up. And then I re-sowed a few that hadn't. Looks like they're starting to come up as well, which is great. So lots of peas in our future, I hope. And then just some more kind of flowers back here. Um, and here I sowed some flowers in a few different spots of our garden that I'm excited to grow this year. This side of the arch underneath the tomatoes, we planted some beans. Um, which honestly haven't been looking that great. They had leaf miners or leaf miner damage um, sh soon after we planted them, but they've really grown up. We're actually starting to get a, a bean right here, which is exciting. Um, and I think once we kind of clean up the tomatoes a bit, they'll be easier to see and manage. Um, but we have a few different ones growing. So it'll be nice to have some beans over on this side. High Liberty. And then uh, a couple more flower pots. Mum. Um, this is a Celosia, the pink flamingo. It has been here all summer long and it's been one of our favorites um, to grow this year. It's just a really vibrant and fun color and it's really, really pretty and cut flower like a bouquet too. Your summer bouquets have been really pretty for this. And then down below I planted, this is a drumstick flower. I planted at the same time as the Celosia. Um, and it has just been an extremely slow grower all summer long. I'm wondering if it's more of a cool season flower because it's looking pretty happy right now, now that it's a little bit cooler out. 
And then I've planted some flax in this pot too. And uh, looks like, I don't know, this almost looks like mint. Not sure where that came from. <clears throat> and then up front in this bed, we have a few more zinnias, some floss flower right back there. Uh, and if you follow us on Instagram, you saw my experience with the praying mantis uh, a few weeks ago. And what was really cool is I saw this giant praying mantis in the garden, which was such a treat to watch. But I found this pupa or egg sac um, on this zinnia. And that is from a praying mantis. So that will hatch in the spring for some praying mantis babies, which will be great. They are great predators, eat a lot of aphids and other bad bugs. So I will be protecting this little egg sac. Um, if it's time to kind of tear out the zinnia, I might just cut it. And someone suggested kind of hanging it in a tree to protect it and give the praying mantis babies a safe place to hatch. For fall, we planted up front here, we have romaine. So we have a few different romaines, um, which looking really good. We planted some bok choy, which is one of my favorite things to grow for fall. So good in like fall soups. Uh, we planted a row of radishes that look are looking really, really good. And then over here are four cauliflower starts, which are a little bit smaller than those broccoli ones but are, I think are looking really good. And oddly enough, these have not had um, nearly as much of a problem with the cabbage worms as those broccolis. Um, but yeah, they've been pretty good here too. All right, moving along, I've planted a couple more flower starts, just direct sown some more fall flowers in these little pots here. Um, so this right here is some flax. So a few flax flowers. I planted a couple more of those drumstick flowers. I had some extra seeds. And then I started some lavender, some French lavender in this pot. So once they get a little bit bigger, I might move them to a different location. But this underneath our pergola has provided some filtered sun during the hot part of the day. So I've left them here to get a little bit bigger. And this bed, if you've been following us, has been housing our pumpkins. Uh, we've harvested a few pumpkins already. We have, I think, just two more growing here, this little baby one. And then we have one more right over here that's pretty small. And these pumpkins, I've cleaned up a lot since I think you guys have seen it. It used to, like the summer was growing like all up on our potting bench and just kind of taking over those pots right there. Um, so I really cut it back once those pumpkins I harvested ripened and I've kind of just let them be here because this bed is going to be a, another garlic and onion bed. Um, and I think it is time to say goodbye to the pumpkins. They have really been covered or been affected by some powdery mildew. So we're gonna carefully remove this. We've already pulled out our yard waste bin to pull this. So we were gonna go ahead and do that. We have some extra compost and we'll dress this bed and then plant some of our garlic. Moving on, we have some more zinnias. This is another Benares giant purple. And then we have these five tree boxes that we use to plant in. Uh, this first one, we've gone, went ahead and planted potatoes in this little guy. We're still waiting on them to come up. Uh, and then once they come up, we'll kind of continue to fill a bit with some soil. This, uh, we have two of these with kale. If you followed us when we were uh, starting all of our fall seeds, I'm not exactly sure why we started so many, so much kale, but we did. Um, and we've harvested some of this. This gigantic plant is actually a self-seed because we planted kale in this box last fall um, through the winter. And it seeded itself, so that's this plant here. Um, these smaller ones are ones that we sowed 
and started this year. Um, so something's kind of munching on them. I haven't really been paying too close attention to these guys, but yeah, they are looking good. So this is the other kale that we have. It's from a different company, a different, um, similar variety, but just a different company. Um, so they are also looking really good. And then I'll come back. We picked up kind of an impulse buy on my part from the nursery, but we picked up some Romanesco that I planted here. First time growing Romanesco for us. So I'm excited to give it a whirl. And then this last tree box houses are Jerusalem artichokes. These stalks are ready to get cut down. You can tell it's just totally it's been leaning for a while, but you don't really want to harvest the rhizome until it starts to die back, which these are pretty well died back, I think. Um, and we're kind of ready to transition this box over and move on with our season. So I think we'll be doing that very, very soon. I think I've said that for like the last month, but that's okay. And then our last bed on this side has um, our U-shaped bed, I call it. Uh, so you guys have seen all summer we've been growing center cut squash on this bed and it just has thrived here. <laughs> we still have um, the center cut growing. So um, we're kind of waiting on some of these to ripen a little bit more. So center cut, if you're new, um, you can harvest when they're green and it, cook it like a summer squash, like a zucchini but you can let them ripen to this yellow color. Here's a good example of one that's ready to pick. And you can store it like a winter squash, which is pretty cool. So we've been allowing a lot of them to ripen to that kind of butternut state and you cook it literally just like butternut. Like blind tasting, you would not know the difference. So they have been really fun to grow this year. It's been extremely prolific for us, um, but yeah, we're, we're kind of tired of the squashes. We have so much in our freezer frozen, so uh, we are ready to move on from them. And we may be, look at this guy way up here. Can you see that? We are ready to uh, let this guy go. And there's a, just, it doesn't want give up. I honestly think if we let it continue to grow, it would just grow for another couple months, honestly. So we'll see. Underneath on this trellis, we've planted more peas. Um, so they are looking really good. Waiting on them to get a little bit taller and we will help kind of get them reaching for the trellis there. And then also in this bed are are Napa cabbages. Do you guys remember how worried I was when we planted them? Because when they were inside in our greenhouse, as starts, they had gotten this like powdery mildew on them. But since we planted them out, they are literally living their best life. Look how good they look. I'm so excited for some Napa cabbage. I think we will be swimming in it very, very soon. And then on this little trellis that we planted. I planted some beans. These are scarlet runner beans and um, really just planted them more so for the flower than the bean. Um, but yeah, really excited to get some vining flowers up here. And these two brassicas are some more cauliflower. Cauliflower likes lots of room so I planted the, the last two right over here. Have some more flowers back here, some clary sage that's looking really good. Another rudbeckia. We planted celery right back here. That's honestly not looking great, but we'll, not really sure what its deal is. But uh, yeah, we'll see. we'll see what happens. I think maybe it's just a slow grower. There, and then right over here, we direct sowed a couple things. We have carrots that have come up and are starting to get their true leaves right in here. 
These have been a test of my patience because they take so long to germinate. Look, there's another center cut right there. We planted some rutabaga. I always want to call it rudbeckia. Right over here that has come up, starting to get true leaves there as well. And then planted just another little pollinator island, some stock, some bachelor button. I think I planted milkweed here as well, but we're getting a ton of borage. A ton of borage that has self-seeded from last year. I've been pulling so many borage weeds from different places. And then we have some more zinnias from the summer. These guys are looking so good back here. And the bees have been loving it. Been really digging the purple color this year. I planted a lot of the Benary's giant purple. In this little corner, it looks like I need to kind of stake it back up to get it out of the walkway. And then this little guy is Gomfrena, another one of my favorite summer flowers to grow. They're just really cute and pretty. And then this is just left over of that center cut squash vine that we planted way over there and it just grew all, it took over this summer. So yeah, we'll be harvesting a lot of that soon. So let me walk you over to our last bed. And while I walk over there, I'll show you, we have some volunteer pumpkins back here. Got one, it's getting close to harvesting another sugar pie, it looks like. Our roses are totally loving this cooler weather. We have two of these hybrid teas, this one, and that one over there, and then a couple climbing roses here on this arch. But the hybrid teas, these are sweet mademoiselle. They are my favorite. They look so good year after year. We planted them two or three years ago and just loving this spot. It gets morning sun, afternoon shade, and they just get so dang big. Like it's as tall as our house. And I think I talked about this a bit on Instagram but just a friendly reminder, if you're in our zone, it's a good time of year to kind of clean up your roses and fertilize if you want some more blooms during the fall um, growing season. Because it won't be until January when you like really cut it down and let it go dormant. So you have a few months still to get some more blooms. Looks like I could go up and deadhead a little bit, but um, yeah, it's just really nice to continue that but yeah clean up your base it likes to breathe here at the bottom and then it's really good to kind of see if you have any yellowing leaves um, to cut those guys off um, and then try to clean up as much of the leaves as you can around the base to prevent any disease or pests and fertilize and you'll get some more blooms same goes this is a sweet mademoiselle still this is a crazy branch but um here's these flowers on the climbing rose i trimmed these guys up a lot too because they liked to just try to grow in both directions but i trimmed it up a lot to hopefully get it to bloom again um oh you see this little bee in there oh what a happy little bee and then if you remember just this last year, we planted a couple artichokes in these kind of two little holes um, right there and right there. So excited. We, it tried to flower a little bit this last year and we just let them go to flower and uh, haven't harvested any yet. Just letting it kind of establish itself. Here's that other sweet mademoiselle. Just looking happy as a clam. I finally got around to digging out that lemon balm um, and I'll probably be digging it out for a while. Just look at this. It's just com literally coming up everywhere. Um, like I'm not even going to be able to pull that out. But um, yeah, happy that's gone. We've had nasturtium here next to our little sprinkler system for a while. Looks like it's coming back, which is cool. It's always fun to see. And then we have our crazy, crazy passion fruit vine here. I've attempted to trim it just a bit because it was 
taking over. You can see, like, I cut these off because it was trailing up our power lines and into our lilac bush. Um, so I need to get up there and pull those down, um, as well as these ones. <laughs> so don't mind that. But our passion fruit's looking good. It's starting to show some flowers, which is exciting. This one's not open, but you can see that guy there. And then here in this bed, so this housed a lot more of our peppers over the summer. Uh, we've left a few of them in because now that it's not quite as hot, they've started to just put out a lot of flowers again. So these are just some snacking sweet peppers or kind of all of these guys over here. We planted a couple habanandas, which I don't think we're, we will grow again. We were so excited about them, um, but they're literally so slow to grow. Lucas really kind of wanted to rip them out, but they've put on so many flowers since the heat died off. So I was like, well, let's just leave them in. They're not taking up a ton of room and see if it wasn't a total fail. We've only harvested one so far this year and I don't even see any on there to harvest. It's just a lot of flowers. So we'll see what happens here. But we did plant we went to the nursery um, because our Brussels sprout starts were a fail. Um, so we planted six Brussels sprouts and then I also impulse bought some uh, cheddar cauliflowers. Um, so there's a six pack there too that I planted. And that's pretty much it for this bed. So passion fruit looking good, peppers looking good, some more brassicas for fall. I'll walk you over and just show you, give you an update on our avocado tree. Anyone else growing an avocado tree in Sacramento? Let me know if yours looks like this. <laughs> um, no idea what's going on and quite honestly, I have not given it enough time to investigate. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, I don't know if that's a watering issue or a fungal issue. But let me know if your avocados look like that. Because I cannot tell you why they look like that. We have our citrus tree here, Leonardo, our lime tree, who set a ton of fruit this year, which is very exciting. And we actually harvested our first limes yesterday. Um, so we are excited for citrus season and future margaritas. Look at all of these. It's so fun. That is the quick and dirty of our garden. So thanks so much for joining me today in the garden. I always enjoy showing you guys what we have growing and seeing what you guys are growing too. So please start a conversation with us in the comment section. And I can't wait to update you guys in a few weeks with how our garden is looking in November.